Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. Now, with Google's plan to delay killing third-party cookies until 2023, Many businesses are currently breathing a sigh of relief that they no longer have to scramble to plan out their consumer data collection practices. However, as the world moves towards increased consumer data privacy measures backed by legislation such as the GDPR here in Europe and local state levels in Colorado and California in the US, the death of third-party data is inevitable. And businesses need to start thinking to get ahead and succeed in that new world. And companies also are faced with the need to personalise based on the behaviours behind their content consumption, even in the case that their visitors are completely unknown to them. But to build trust, right now, brands need to start doing things like offering loyalty programmes like... We see at McDonald's where customers can receive points for purchases that translate to freebies later on and also track the content that consumers are engaging with to see what's resonating, again, even if the customer is anonymous. So after Optimizely released data on consumer shopping habits and the overarching theme that came from that being that Gen Z and millennials start their shopping journeys on social media apps, the majority of them left those social media apps to make their purchase on a third-party site such as Amazon. So I wanted to explore some of the findings of that report. So I invited Alex Atzberger, CEO of Optimizely, onto the podcast today to find out a little more. So buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to New York so you can join me and Alex in conversation. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do. Yes, thank you, Neil, for for having me. Um, I'm Alex Atzberger, the CEO of Optimizely. Optimizely is um, the leading company for digital experience platforms. We help companies adapt really to the way customers want to buy from them. Um, Today, every company is competing uh, digitally. Every company has customers that want to buy from them and engage with their brands. Uh, through multiple different channels. And in order to provide a fantastic digital customer experience, um, companies need to adapt to how customers want to buy. And we have a very strong belief at Optimizely that it's about uh, being able to provide the right content at the right time uh, to that truly that individual um, in order to drive a fantastic customer experience and ultimately drive growth for companies. I think we live in a world, Neil, where it's all about growth. It's all about um, uh, delighting your customer. And uh, our firm belief is that you need to be able to create an optimized digital experience based on the customer behavior. And uh, so that's what we do. That's what we're really, really good at. And uh, that's what makes it exciting to, to be at Optimized every single day. And it really does feel like an exciting time to be involved in the industry at the moment. But I'm going to take you back before all of this. And I want to learn a little bit more about your origin story, where your passion for technology came from and how the worlds of technology and digital and and experiences all collided for you. I mean, can you remember that and, and ultimately what put you on this path today? Yeah, uh, now I need to go back in history, but uh, (laughs) I remember coming out of college and it was the dot-com boom uh, at the end of the 90s. And it was it was such an enormously invigorating time because you saw so much passion, so many breakthrough ideas. And I remember graduating from NYU Stern School of Business and everybody went into finance. And I remember one day having an interview with a very prominent investment bank and we were sitting in a wood paneled room and we had suits on and it was, you know, it was one, one side. And then the same day I had an interview uh, at a startup company and it was in someone's kitchen uh, with a, with a can of Coke and um, a no suit, you know? And at that point, what, what just fascinated me was, you know, the aspect of innovation, the aspect of entrepreneurship and regardless of where I, 
you know, took my career in the next steps, et cetera. I was always tied to technology, always to digital transformation, but also always to this notion that um, that you can really have an impact. You can really make a difference uh, through technology and the technology that you provide to companies to to scale and and honestly change the world with. And I think that's created the uh, the enthusiasm for technology uh, many many years ago. What a great story. I love that. And I also recently spoke with, if you know him, Justin Anovic, Chief uh, Product Officer at Optimizely, about how businesses can unlock digital potential through a combination of personalization and experimentation. However, as the world moves towards increased consumer data privacy measures backed by legislations like GDPR here in uh, Europe and the local state levels in Colorado and California, the death, not to mention the death of third-party data, is surely inevitable and businesses will need to get ahead to succeed. So my big question to you is, how are you helping businesses look beyond obstacles like that and think differently about how they unlock digital potential? Yeah, first of all, Neil, fortunately, I know Justin, so I know Justin very well, obviously. Yeah. But, um, you know, we, we obviously think a lot about how companies uh, need to get closer to their consumer, understand their consumer in a digital environment. And, you know, we can go into the details of, you know, GDPR and legislation and other pieces. But I think the big picture is ultimately that companies uh, need to develop their own knowledge and, uh, and understanding of the customers they serve. Doing this through third-party data is ultimately uh, ultimately a, a, a worse way of knowing your customer than knowing your customer directly. And I think sometimes it's helpful to take a step back and remember how things worked when things were not digital. So take, for instance, a, a retailer and you have a store and your consumer comes into the store. Do you know what the name of the consumer is? Have you, you know, do you know their... There are different bank records and other things. No, you don't. You really just see the person. And then you see what the person is looking at. You see the person is that checking out different sort of clothes. And maybe they're interested in a winter jacket right now. And then, you know, what you try to do as a store attendant, you try to provide them with recommendations, maybe based on their their, their, their the items that they have been looking at. Yeah, And you maybe make a suggestion of what else they want to take into the changing room. So, you know, you really understood your customers because you actually watched them. You understood their behaviors. And so for me, you know, ultimately it's about companies understanding behaviors in the moment they're actually interacting with your brand so that you can start to provide them a better experience. And everything else that you have, be it which other websites they visited before, data that you have on them, all of that is nearly gravy on the top but it shouldn't be the baseline of what you know about a customer. And I think if you take that attitude, you will be able to actually start to know your customer much better. There's a tremendous data point, Neil, that I always come back to. Even the most sophisticated retailers online, probably 90% of their traffic on average is people who are before the login button. They don't know yet that it's Neil coming to their website. Yeah, mm -hmm. And you still want to start to personalize the experience for that person that you don't know yet, that hasn't identified themselves yet. And you can absolutely do this by watching people's behavior on your site, just as you did, you know, years ago when people would go into a store and the store attendant would just watch the person. But now you can do it for a million customers all at the same time. And there was a saying, I think it was somebody at IBM said this over 10 years ago now. They said that the last experience or the last best experience that any of us have anywhere becomes the future expectation for what, for what you uh, expect everywhere now and every single experience. And it, it's so tricky, though, because I think for most consumers, Sp uh, Spotify, Netflix, Amazon, and all those big services personalize uh, services and that becomes the new expectation but if you overstep the mark as a brand you're quickly deemed creepy or overstepping the mark so what should brands be doing to to build and, and maintain trust for tomorrow yeah i think first of all i think all all brands need to obviously um, establish a, a trust-based relationship by yeah. indicating what information do they collect about 
customers and and consumers. And I think a lot of times when you go now to websites, you see the cookie alert and it, it nearly becomes too much because you really don't know what you are agreeing to or not agreeing to. Uh, because I think ultimately it's too much about the cookie. It's way too little being talked about, again, understanding really the, the customer behaviors. And you can do that today without leveraging uh, cookie information. And this is why also, for instance, apps work differently than websites do. And, you know, that's where the opportunity lies for companies and brands who really are digitally minded to uh, leverage an understanding of customer behavior. Um, Technologies such as Optimizely, what we do for customers is to actually allow uh, companies to understand their consumers based on the content people consume. That tells you something about who you are you are addressing. That tells you something about how to personalize the next best action or the next best content that you want to show. A very very uh, uh, clear topic is is experimentation. Every media company in the world uses experimentation to test every single headline, every single piece of of content that you see based on uh, you know, customer behaviors. And that really drives personalization. So my big appeal to any brand is, if you are not using today a culture of, of experimentation where you test different options with your customers and continuously test because customers' or behaviors also change over time, you're really, really missing out on the opportunity to actually build better customer experiences. And you can do all of that without being creepy, without kind of trying to tap into customer information that, um, you know, customers wouldn't want to share with you. And I think you can circumvent a lot of the privacy conversation if you actually, you know, just look at customer behaviors. And it gives you, I think, richer and better information and data than um, trying to, you know, find information that, again, customers wouldn't want to share with you, which is creepy ultimately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And before you came on the podcast today, I was doing a little bit of research on some of the work that you're doing at Optimizely. And I came across, I think it was in May, you guys released data on consumer habits and the overreaching theme, that the overarching theme that when Gen Z and millennials start their shopping journeys on social media apps, a majority leave the apps to make the purchase on third party sites such as Amazon. But can you expand on those findings? Yeah, happy to. I mean, this was a study we did with about a thousand U.S. consumers, um, and it was very interesting to see how important it is, especially for the Gen Z, uh, but also for for millennials, to really look at the expectations they have in brands, also into their brand value and their mission. I think it's important that their storytelling real storytelling about who you are as a company and what your brand stand for and signify. And that came very clearly out of the out of the research reports. At the same time, um, when it comes to the digital experience and what people want from the brands they work with, you know, they 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 start to look for for perfection. They really are making decisions based on obviously the smoothness, the simplicity of the digital experience. And, and I think this ties to, you know, so much about what some brands do really well, where it's about simplicity, about speed, but also about personalization. And obviously, as platforms are able to gain more data about your behaviors and your, your demographics, et cetera, they're able to better do that. Um, but the other part that I think was very interesting about this study, Neil, is that generally, as every generation goes further, people become more comfortable with sharing more information. So this trade-off between how much privacy do I give up so that I get get better personalization, there's certainly a a trend line that says, you know, Gen Z is more willing to give up information than maybe millennials, than millennials who are compared to baby boomers. That being said, Gen Z are still concerned about how much information they give up. So you cannot just stop you know, again, um, building the trust that we just spoke about. But there's certainly a direction where uh, future generations will become more and more comfortable with giving up more of their privacy in return of getting a better uh, customer experience. And then I would say finally is that we did a lot of um, research on how people actually define a digital customer experience. And the data is a little bit all over the place, which uh, tells me 
that it's ultimately about um, any form of screen that you're interacting with. That screen might be on your wrist, it might be on your laptop, it might be in a stadium, it doesn't matter where, where it is. But ultimately, all of those are digital experiences and you do need to provide a consistent experience as you engage with consumers across those channels. And for any small business leader listening, can you also expand on why they should actually be thinking twice about cross-selling on Amazon's platform, despite, I mean, there's so much hype around it right now, but can you expand on, on why they should be actually be thinking twice about that? Yeah, look, Amazon is, is, is obviously a, a, a gigantic platform and such an important part of, of commerce, um, you know, across the world now, not no longer just in the US, but obviously is, is a very, very important part of, of conducting commerce today. And, you know, what, what we find uh, just across the companies we work with is that ultimately more companies want to be in more places and marketplaces such as Amazon uh, play a big role in that, that ecosystem. Now, Amazon is particular in a couple of ways. One is in terms of how much information do you have about um, the customer data that you actually have access to relative to being on the Amazon platform. So do you actually see and engage with your customers in the same way if it was your own site? And that's the trade-off that comes obviously by selling through third-party channels. Um, I mean, the same is true if you go direct to consumer versus going through, let's say, Whole Foods. Yeah, which by the way is obviously owned by by Amazon as well. Yeah. But ultimately, ultimately, it's about how much do you know about your customer. And then the second part is, um, and I think it has covered been covered by the, the media quite extensively, is obviously, you know, is there um, is there a, a risk for brands that, you know, depending on how successful you know a certain product is, you know, can can it ultimately at one point become an Amazon product? That's being created. So there's different different pieces. I my recommendation would always be for brands uh, to uh, analyze the pros and cons, find a find the path that's right for their business. Uh, obviously, you know, again, many many of our customers, if not all, uh, participate in Amazon's marketplace in some format, and we obviously help our customers connect to marketplaces such as Amazon and others uh, to extend their reach. And we are approaching that time of year where our inboxes are going to be uh, facing an onslaught of Black Friday and Cyber Monday emails. And many retailers are going to be looking to bounce back after such a, a, a turbulent few years, should I say. But I, mean, I also read that Optimizely conducted a survey on consumers' heightened expectations for digital experiences this coming holiday season. So can you offer a little background on that survey and ultimately any key takeaways that you found from that? Yeah, so this was a, a pretty big survey we ran with over 5,000 consumers across actually multiple markets, including the US, the UK, Germany, Australia, and Sweden. And what's really, you know, the, the big uh, finding here, Emil, is that this is a big holiday season that's coming up, no doubt about it. And it's very, very clear that digital experience is, you know, it was already very important because COVID kind of made it the, the only way, you know, people could engage with your brand, but it continues to be extremely important. Um, we had, I think there was about a 21% increase over last year in terms of what people believe they spent this, uh, this holiday season. Um, you know, we've all heard and seen everything around the supply chain restrictions uh, that are that are that are happening and sh and you know really shortages. So it becomes really really important to think about how can you adapt to how your customer wants to spend with your brand or with your company, and how can you provide a good customer experience, even for instance if you run out of stock, if you have alternatives, if you can provide alternative products. Uh, there's definitely a, a heightened expectations from customers and there's a lot of demand to fulfill. So I'm curious, Alex, did, was there anything in the report that surprised you at all? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, I think you know, what probably surprised us the most is that you know, about one third of the global consumers expect ultimately the experience to be better. And yeah. this actually means that they uh, have, again, heightened expectations. They believe the personalization needs to be better. So I think brands need to live up to the expectations that um, you know, consumers ultimately have because now that you have higher expectation, you, know, you don't want to um, under-deliver, but you obviously want to deliver at the expectations over-deliver. 
And I think it also points to the opportunity to, for, for retailers to use, obviously, the holiday shopping season to establish trust, which is about, you know, my item arrives on time, I have a great customer experience, and obviously gain that data that we talked about in the beginning about really understanding your, your customer. But it also requires brands now to put in place the, um, the capabilities to actually scale to the, to the uh, demand that's out there. I completely agree. And I think if we all took ourselves away from our work life and thought about our expectations as consumers, we'll find so many answers there. And if there is any business leader listening anywhere in the world to our conversation today, if you were to take all the information you've learned from the surveys, reports, and so many conversations with different brands around the world, what do you think they should be focusing in on 2022? And and also, how can Optimizely help them make that journey a little bit easier? Yeah, I think the everything over the last couple of years has accelerated so much, Neil, yeah. that for me, there's really probably two things that, that stand out. Uh, one is companies need to stop um, making assumptions about their customers, but really get to know their customers. And the biggest part that I see uh, that's a challenge right now is that companies uh, many, many companies fall further and further behind because they're actually not putting um, or not really adopting a digital mindset. And what I mean by this is a mindset that really is, makes decisions based on data. Um, with with Optimizely, for instance, we work with unbelievable brands around really moving away from assumption-based decision-making, but really making decisions based on knowing and using science to really drive outcomes in terms of growth for their business. Um, and you know, using, for instance, experimentation as a way to actually understand your customer behaviors rather than just guessing what your customers want. So for me, it's absolutely essential that companies, as we go into 2022, uh, use that 2022 year to, to say like, look, how can we catch up and how can we actually embrace a scientific mindset as we think about what content to create, what content to share with customers, because there's so much created that just goes to waste because it's based on assumptions. So I think assumptions is the big enemy. And the second part uh, is for me, urgency. It's so important that uh, people realize that there are four companies in the United States now that are 25% of the GDP. And those companies are just going to get better because they use more data, they use more experimentation, they are actually using data in their decision making. And so there's, I think, real urgency for brands, for retailers, for across leaders across all industries to understand that the digital experience is um, core to their future. And you need to be have urgency around moving ahead in your journey. Well, so many big takeaways there. I can't thank you enough for coming on and sharing them with me. But we began today's podcast talking about your origin story. What put you on this path? And as we come full circle, I'm now going to have a bit of fun with you and ask you, is there a song or piece of music that was the soundtrack to your career in tech? Is there a particular song that means anything to you, helps you get your head in the zone before going on stage? If you've got a song and a story, uh, we'll add that song to our Spotify playlist. So uh, do you have anything to mind? <laughs> That's a, a nice question, uh, Neil. You know, Neil, I'm. Uh, I like to say that I'm. Uh, uh, I'm German from nationality. I like to say that I'm probably Germany's uh, largest Bruce Springsteen fan. I don't know if that's true or not because there's probably a lot of a lot of pretty big fans. But uh, uh, Springsteen was always uh, very important to me, uh, in particular in his in his work ethic and you know, uh, leaving it always out every day that he gets on stage for his, his fans. Yeah? yeah. And so uh, his entire body of work has always been an inspiration to me. I probably listen to the song Badlands um, when I really want to get myself fired up. And before I go on a, a, a stage, because, you know, you kind of, he says in the song, I want to go out tonight. I want to find out what I got. Uh, that's, that's kind of, for me, always the, the inspiration around, um, around really having the work ethic and also the connection to the audience and being able to speak to everyone in your audience in a way that that connects. And I think authenticity is super important for me as a leader. I think authentic brands is important for them to connect with their customer base. And I think uh, Bruce does this uh, for his fans and his audience 
uh, by um, always um, playing his heart out. So that's that's my story. Wow, great choice there. And as someone that grew up on the 75 to 85 Bruce Springsteen box set, <laughs> live box set, man, yeah. I'm completely with you on that. So I'll add that to the Spotify playlist. You should use the live version, by the way, Neil, because th- that live album has a fantastic version of Badlands. So I, I, the, the live versions are what I listen to as well. The live album, 75 to 85, Neil, was my... my I have an older brother who... Um, who, uh, you know, and, and, you know, that album was my, my blues album as well. So I love that you brought that up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the, the, the river there, I don't know if you remember the oh, river and you had oh, that five no, minute no. intro. Oh, it's so good. It was his dad cutting his hair. Yes. You know? That's the one. I know that word for word. Right? It meant a lot oh. to me when I was a teenager. Oh, you got, you got goosebumps uh, on that. You know, this was always the saddest song, you know, about dreams that you have and them not coming true, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, we'll get that live version on there. And for anyone listening that would uh, like to find out more information about Optimizely, contact your team, check out some of the reports, what's the best starting point? Uh, absolutely. Uh, our our digital presence, so that's our website at optimizely.com, as well as on Twitter, you can follow at Optimizely. If you want to personally find out more about me, you can either go to my Twitter at A. Atzberger or on my LinkedIn account, Alex Atzberger. Fantastic. Well, I'll add those links to the uh, show notes, but I love chatting with you today about digital experience, optimization, and AI-powered personalization, experimentation, and how brands can meet those increasing expectations of their customers. But more than anything, your personal story, that origin story, and a Bruce soundtrack to boot as well. Thank you so much for taking the time to share that with me today. Thank you, Neil, for having me. For those of you that are new to Optimizely, They provide digital experience optimization, including AI-powered personalization and experimentation, all that encompasses A and B testing, multivariate testing, and server-side testing. But what really interests me is how they're eliminating the guesswork to enable brands to deliver relevant experiences driven by data with privacy in mind. And there are some huge brands using Optimizely out there who are all on that same journey of trying to win and compete in the digital economy. And some of those brands are Gap, StubHub, IBM, Wall Street Journal, and there are many, many more. So a huge thank you to Alex for agreeing to come on here and share his insights today. But over to you and everyone listening. What are your thoughts on insights around anything that we've talked about today? As always, email me, techblogwriter at outlook.com, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram at Neil C. Hughes, and my website is techblogwriter.co.uk. So keep those messages coming in, and we'll do it all again tomorrow. So thanks for listening as always, and until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.